Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the technical parallel session four on computing in the annual International Research Conference 2022 of General Sir John Kotalabra Defense University. This technical session is based on the theme of enhancing the digital transformation through emerging technologies and will be chaired by Dr. E. A. T. A. Idrisuri, Senior Lecturer. Department of Computer Science, University of Sri Vijayawardenepur. The president of this session will be Mrs. Kayamini Janasugandhan, lecturer probationary, Department of Computer Engineering, General Sir John Kotalavala Defense University. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to invite Mrs. Janasugandhan to give you a brief introduction on Dr. E. A. T. A. Idrisuri. Enhancing the digital transformation through emerging technologies of the 15th International Research Conference of the Faculty of Computing, General Sir John Kathalavala Defense University. The technical session will be chaired by Dr. E. A. T. A. Idrisuria from the Department of Computer Science, University of Sri Jayawardenepura. Dr. Anand Idrisuria obtained his first degree from the University of Sri Jayawardenepura in mathematics and a postgraduate diploma in statistic from the University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. And also, he holds a master degree in computer application from the University of Shanghai, China. Later, Dr. Anand Edrisuria received his philosophy of licentiate degree and a honorary doctorate in computer science from the University of Chokholham, Sweden. Highlights from 31st year of distinguished service, including working as a senior lecturer at the University of Sri Jayawardenepura and General Sir John Kotalavra Defense University. He is a research person of curriculum development and works as a team leader to introduce new subject and new de degree programs at the University of Sri Jayawardenepura. General Sir John Kortelavala Defense University and the University of Vocational Technology. Further, he is the founder of the BSc in Computer Science at the University of Sri Jawa in 1998. And also, he proposed the Masters in Computer Science degree program in KDU. He has taught as a visiting lecturer at several leading universities in Sri Lanka. And also, he's, he has served to KDU for two years in the Department of Computer Engineering during his sabbatical period. Dr. Edri Surya plays the role of chairman in evaluating proposal submitted from Horizon University, National School of Business Management, and Kalampu International Nautical and Engineering College in Information Technology software engineering and computer science. His research interests include software engineering related fields and business modeling. Dr. Ananda Idri Surya has authored many technical papers in reputed journals and conferences. Also, he holds about 10 H index values in Google Scholar. It is great pleasure that I invite Dr. Anand Edri Surya to chair this technical parallel session for. It's over to you, sir. Defense engineer and also working as a freelance web developer. He is a webmaster of web activities subcommittee in IEEE Sri Lanka session. His current research interests include blockchain, social tech. Search engine optimization and uh, psychology. And, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Uh, for your presentation to the start of Project U uh, which is blockchain based e voting system for a secret in We live in a social structure where the winner take call system is available everywhere. Voting undoubtedly matters uh, when it comes to electoral results. The person who wins the most votes wins the election and comes into power, sometimes even control over the entire country. Uh, the most common and traditional way to vote is the paper-based system. This 
counting process is completely manual. This uses a paper ballot to collect votes resulting in large cost being incurred. Finance must be spent on the ballot, uh, the ballot box, the counting process, security, transportation, and many more things. Also, sometimes uh, we hear of electoral violence and fraudulent voting cases because because of such violation, the transparency of election is damaged and trust in public election and democracy is reduced significantly. So, uh, in general sense, voting is a simple system that facilitates collective decision making, which allows its participants to solve any type of ideological issue, including selecting the most suitable leader for themselves, which is the most application of voting world. Uh, so, as a need of an voting system is uh, first of all security. Uh, when talking about a secure election, we mean the overlap of security layers that are implemented to ensure that the vote counted are in accordance with the will of the voters and that they have been issued by the voters allowed to participate in the election. And in electronic voting process, in addition to logical and physical protection layers, mechanisms are established to ensure that only users accredited by an official document part participate, uh, so that all secure guarantees are provided that equate the uh, electronic voting process with a classic electoral process. Uh, again, uh, it's the increased level of participation and internet-based electronic provide these voters to freedom to vote from anywhere they want. Their only requirements being an internet connection and computing device. This has uh, several benefits that follows including uh, allowing citizens who have traveled abroad to vote, uh, allowing elderly, sick and bedridden citizens to vote with this. Uh, accessibility also uh, something I mentioned earlier. Uh, voters can uh, access the system from anywhere. Uh, auditability. auditability. Uh, with e voting technology, the whole voting process is auditable and end to end. The system of the the design of the system allows administrators to guarantee users that their votes are correctly issued and accounted for according to the intention to vote. In addition, the voting is issued for each user. Uh, efficiency. Uh, the redu reduction in organize reduction in organizational and implementation costs significantly increases the efficiency of the election management compared to traditional paper vote. Uh, <coughs> precision: the electronic vote eliminates errors in manual count, which brings with it an accurate and quick publication of result with uh, receipt of vote for each vote cast. Reliability. The mathematical process incorporated in internet uh, technology allows the participation of independent observers who testify that election fraud and manipulation are available. Estonian e voting. Uh, the Estonian government began the legislative process in 2001 and introduced the new voting system in, uh, by 2005. By 2002, Estonia had also introduced an ID card system, and by 2005, almost 80% of the electorate had this ID card. At the time, Estonia was saying that uh, did everything with their computer, their banking taxes, signing documents, and asked uh, just why not voting. Uh, so the voting process of uh, Estonia is pretty simple. The voter goes to the election webpage and downloads an application. Uh, so application to pass their vote. Next, the voter ID was seen more herself using the ID card, insert to smart card reader to their mobile phone. Uh, once the voter is authenticated uh, with a PIN code, it would say, uh, welcome, here is your candidate list. Uh, the voter can the, then cast their vote for their preferred candidate. The vote process takes around 40 seconds unless you take more time to decide which candidate to vote. So the next question is how is the internet voting process secured? Uh, securing the internet voting process is like the way we secure the high importance information systems such as banking and critical infrastructure. The trick is to guarantee the secrecy of the vote. To do this, the ballots are immediately encrypted on computer 
when you vote and they are decrypted centrally by the election commission only once they are anonymized. Uh, there is no tech book who voted how so that how we can maintain secrecy and privacy. Uh, the system is like using a double envelope uh, system for ballot where we can only count or decrypt anonymous vote. The voter can also check whether his uh, or her vote has arrived at the election commission server properly using a uh, secondary device. After the voter casts their vote online, they can uh, then use an application on their smartphone to scan a QR code from the computer. The QR code enables you, your device to communicate to the state election server to show the voter how he or she voted without from, uh, compromising the privacy of the vote cast. Uh, those, uh, so, finally, there are addition mechanisms to preserve the in integrity of the election and ballot box. Votes are registered with the third party and a career trust service provide who issues time step. So, aim of uh, my, uh, our project is the uh, uh, research, design, implemented and evaluated web application for an electronic voting system that will make the voting system efficient and safer while increasing transparency for the benefits of the country. The main object of, objective of this research is to create a secure electronic voting system and to save a fortune for our country along with the raising the transparency and trust of the uh, system among citizens. Other objectives of this project include affirming the value of popular opinion, providing better results with high accuracy in minimum time, enhancing the security of the voting system to be suitable to Sri Lanka context, minimizing force, ballot rigging and force, uh, again increasing voter engagement. So uh, we yeah, introduce you our project you vote, which is a blockchain based voting system where user can vote remotely, reducing uh, the risk and shortcoming the current voting system. Uh, these are related works uh, which have studied while implement this system. Uh, so, blockchain in nutshell, uh, blockchain is a system of recording information in a way that makes it difficult to impose, difficult or impossible to change, hack or cheat the system. The blockchain is uh, essentially a digital radio transaction that is duplicated and distributed across the entire network of computer system on the blockchain. Uh, each block, uh, block uh, in the chain contains a number of transactions and every time a new transaction occurs on the blockchain, a record of the transaction is added to every participant's list. Current blockchain uh, study E-voting uh, inherits complexity in more apparent ways such as needs to operate the system uh, different geographical location without sticking to one boundary in a particular geographical location and uh, unbounding cultural and temporal boundaries where this e-voting system applied as a socio-technical system. Uh, cryptocurrency transaction, the Bitcoin that you sent to someone was sent to you from someone else when they, uh, when they sent them to you. The address that uh, they sent it from was registered on the Bitcoin blockchain uh, as a transaction input and your address, the address they sent it to was registered on the uh, Bitcoin network as the transaction out. When you send that Bitcoin on to someone else, your wallet creates a transaction output which is the address of the person you are sending the coin to. The transaction will then be registered on a Bitcoin network with a Bitcoin address as a transaction in. Uh, when that person sends those Bitcoins someone else, their address will uh, in turn become the transaction input and that other person's Bitcoin address will be the transaction out. 51% uh, of attack uh, targets the Bitcoin network. Uh, it becomes possible based on certain uh, condition being met. Uh, for an organization to lo launch such an uh, attack successfully, it would need to somehow control the most mining power of the Bitcoin network. This would lead to attackers being able to control uh, which transactions are verified. More uh, concerning, it will uh, allow them to misuse their own coins for uh, gain the profits. Transparency. 
A smart contract is a computer program that runs on the blockchain. A smart contract uh, can be considered as a trusted third party between non trusting participants. Smart contract consists of uh, contract storage, the balance, and program code. So, uh, why blockchain for e voting? Uh, basically, it's because of the low cost. Uh, when we are comparing to the uh, fee, uh, uh, fees uh, which we need to use in uh, printing the ballot, ballots, uh, creating ballot boxes and transformation and for security, this uh, cost we have to use to the blockchain is uh, very low. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, blockchain is with, uh, implemented with a high security and uh, high efficiency because uh, we can uh, see the uh, result real time after the vote uh, and transparency uh, because uh, we uh, provide the code to the uh, uh, citizens who can check whether uh, their their it consists any error so uh, something for Uh, this is the uh, architectural diagram of our uh, system. Uh, as uh, you can see, there is uh, interface uh, and the blockchain and database for check the uh, users have registered to the system. Uh, key points to consider. Uh, this uh, system should be semi-online because uh, we have to run a parallel system because some of uh, the citizens are uh, probably couldn't be uh, use the uh, online platform and uh, because uh, there are Tamil, Sinhala and uh, English three citizens in Sri Lanka and it should be language free also uh, two separate blockchains should be used to whether uh, to record that uh, this participant have uh, vote, uh, vote to the vote have casted the vote and then uh, the its vote record for another vote. Uh, it, uh, if we were to review our current progress on this project, we have debugged the e voting system to a satisfaction and the extent using contribution from open source contributors uh, in the October first uh, last year. Uh, and the system is almost ready to be implemented in a real uh, life scenario. So these are technologies I, uh, I used for implement this system, uh, which is uh, React as the front end, or just for the back end, and Solidity as the framework. Uh, I use Solidity for this uh, blockchain de development. Uh, in this system, uh, we use Ethereum as the coin, and Solidity is most uh, friendly for Ethereum, de Ethereum blockchain development. Uh, these are the references I have used uh, while implementing this system. Uh, so there are some acknowledgement. And uh, that's the end of the presentation. And thank you. Okay, thank you, Vinsuru. Uh, I would like to uh, pass the ball to the, uh, the judges uh, for any questions and audience implemented from the top level so if you are going to really implement this you have to have an agreement with the government that kind of thing you have to 
yeah, it's voting uh, system. It's a voting system. So that's also case uh, for me. Also, at the moment, I can't uh, tackle this uh, case because uh, have to negotiate with the government. But uh, I also can't uh, uh, give this system to larger audience because I have haven't tested this with larger audience. Uh, audience. But uh, at the moment, uh, like we can use this as a parliament uh, mm. election because uh, small elections. Yeah, so like right. small elections. Mm. Okay, thank you. Is there any uh, legal? Is there any legal uh, background to use this uh, blockchain and the cryptocurrency and all these things in Sri Lanka? NFT, those are very popular in the other countries. Like, so you have mentioned the Estonian case, Estonia, what has happened? Like, so then, um, is there any uh, so far, uh, as far as I know, so far we have not any uh, legal background uh, uh, protecting yeah, but, uh, At the moment, uh, we have some kind of uh, popular opinion to use uh, blockchain, uh, like. Uh, I think some ministers also uh, mentioned this to go. Uh, and uh, as Sri Lanka, I know uh, almost uh, all the uh, big, almost all the freelancers also use uh, some kind of Keep bitcoin the to uh, keep their. And uh, most of the companies in Sri Lanka also keep their uh, money in the, uh, as bitcoins because Free, of the what is, what is the like uh, security aspects? Uh, and, uh, this security aspect, uh, I can ensure for my end this uh, system is almost secure. So, uh, and then I want to increase the uh, security of the system, and that's why I uh, give it to open source community to check whether is there any uh, bugs in the system. We did it in the last uh, October, we are October is yes. Thank you. So, any question from audience? So, Vincent, I have a question. Uh, how this differ, how this system differ from uh, traditional e-voting system? By it means uh, uh, traditional the e system. The blockchain. Uh, uh, most of the systems are use the centralized uh, database uh, because of that. Uh, even the administrators ha have the access. Uh, as we are living in Sri Lanka, they could be uh, do some changes for money to the centralized uh, uh, database. Uh, but uh, because of this uh, system, database is uh, decentralized. Uh, we can assure that uh, we can't do some changes to the data uh, in the blockchain. We ca cannot alter the data. In so of, uh, data in the system has function. So how do you uh, handle the reliability of your system? Uh, so, sir, reliability, I didn't test this system uh, with uh, that much of four years. Uh, I have to test this uh, with large audience, uh, but for like smaller audience, uh, I, the reliability I have tested about uh, twenty percent. So, validation purpose, you select a sample of twenty yeah. users because uh, I at the moment I use this uh, sample uh, blockchain uh, environment uh, for uh, trouble. It don't say provides like uh, same account. For oh, testing purpose, uh, can you go for beta testing? Yeah, uh, we can go for the beta testing. Well, that improves the. Uh, you can improve the product. Uh, go for, for, who can go for larger customer base? Uh, before that, uh, we also in, uh, need to implement a system that uh, to um, I authenticate the user in an advanced level like uh, with the fingerprint face recognition you know, uh, to uh, identify the ID card to something. Uh, 
uh, we have to add them we are currently working on adding it to the system and uh, then we can give it to the uh, proper bigger okay questions from audience sir so i have a question yeah can you hear me okay so here you are collecting a real time data right sorry uh, your data is kind of a real time data right it yeah. means the voting uh, so you are only counting the vote or you you just collecting the uh, vote that those who are what i mean the user yeah uh, we both collecting the user who have voted than the vote uh, but uh, as i mentioned this uh, those are with the two separated blocks one blockchain consists only uh, the vote uh, just uh, just uh, this participant voted uh, and there is a vote and who, for who uh, he or she have voted in the other uh, blockchain consists uh, this participant have voted uh, just this participant have voted then it is uh, deep okay so when you are collecting the user details yeah. so is it necessary to get a ethical clearance because it's kind of a personal details right uh, it's something like uh, we are we are something like uh, in general election we have book can be underlying the user name. yeah but in that case we don't providing our name right sorry ma'am we don't providing our name or other details right when we are doing it uh, physically i mean in the uh, i mean like the yeah. real voting uh we give giving our uh, they have a look uh, using uh, use, uh, which consists of our names and the identity card number then uh, they underline system after vote yeah it's only for the registration right but in the voting paper we don't uh, see my our name or that's any I, that's why i mentioned that there are there are two separate blockchains and one consists the vote and one consists the user name so there is no matching for the vote and who who uh, no, no no there is no match that's a, uh, because vote should be privacy and thing. okay even when you are collecting the user details uh, so it's it's not necessary to uh, do the ethical clearance because you are collecting for personal uh, details right uh, but uh, we have to collect that user have voted or not that's why we are collecting the user Okay okay thank you Vita So any more questions uh, if not uh, we can move to the next presentation uh, Next presenter will be uh, CS Vanika Surya uh, Vanika Surya is uh, following BSc honors of tech and degree program at faculty of computing KDU and currently is doing his internship at Codegen International as a software engineer he is interested in web application development blockchain and cryptography and ai techniques how about you one go so here incentivized by blockchain technology uh, thank you sir uh, so good uh, good afternoon to all the respective members joining us here today Uh, my paper is on uh, decentralized uh, platform on research publications, and my co-authors are uh, uh, Mrs. Siri Surya and J uh, J R S Fernando. And this would be the content today. Okay. Uh, since uh, Vinsura spoke about uh, the advantages and of uh, using blockchain, I'll just talk on uh, why moving on to Web 3.0 is important here. Uh, so in web 1.0 it was mostly a, a one way interaction where user can only uh, sorry not interaction the user can only uh, read and uh, read websites and so on and on web point uh, to, so web 2.0 uh, users could interact with the web as well give inputs uh, and uh, so currently we are using web 2.0 and web 3.0 is mostly a decentralized web uh, so basically using blockchain uh, yeah so you uh, moving on to uh, 3.0 is important because uh, again as uh, vincent mentioned earlier uh, 
most of the publication platforms are centralized, uh, which is not decentralized. Uh, that's, uh, I'll speak on that later on. Uh, why should we decentralize? Uh, currently, most of the platforms or uh, publication platforms are centralized. So they possess the uh, rights and they control uh, the scientific community, the, how the knowledge is spread among the scientific community. That's one disadvantage of having a centralized system. And uh, again, uh, universities and libraries uh, wouldn't have to pay to publication platforms. Uh, they wouldn't have to subscribe uh, by having a uh, decentralized uh, platform. Then uh, these are a few of the uh, articles that I found uh, regarding uh, the unfair uh, amount of uh, charge that the publication platforms uh, charge from the users. And uh, there have been some uh, discussion on that. Then uh, from the literature review, I found out that uh, even the peer, traditional peer reviews, such as, uh, such as single line review and double line review, have some flaws as well as So uh, from the proposed system, uh, sorry, in the proposed system in the paper, uh, we have considered the use uh, secondary PPR. Uh, this, this is basically a, a from, uh, apart from the traditional approach uh, using, uh, using single and line uh, interviews. Uh, yeah, what we do is uh, once the paper is published, the users can come and uh, give their reviews in the paper. And, and this is a summary of the article processing charge, uh, charge on the publication platforms. Here, in some cases, you can see that uh, there's a huge amount uh, that you have to pay. Uh, for example, it, it might go up to uh, $9,000 a huge amount. And uh, this is the problem that uh, I have addressed with the proposed system. Um, one is that uh, having a centralized system and uh, having the, uh, the processing the uh, knowledge from a centralized platform to the publication platform uh, affects the scientific community. And uh, in some and in some cases, the uh, uh, publication platform publication platforms uh, charge from the author and the data is available. And these are all of the uh, related work apart from the literature review. Uh, and here, uh, in the literature review, our problem is that uh, most of the uh, most of the uh, published work uh, is not functional up to date. And uh, and also authors do not benefit uh, from publishing such platforms.
So uh, on the left, uh, you see that uh, the, at the bottom uh, we have the target. Then uh, we need uh, PGS uh, for interacting uh, with the blockchain uh, uh, and also IPFS for reference management. Uh, this is the use case diagram. Uh, in the proposed system, a uh, user can be either an author, a reviewer, or a reader. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in our DFP system, is that, uh, the author can get uh, an amount of uh, cryptocurrencies uh, if the uh, 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 reader wants to uh, keep some amount to the author. Uh, so, the author can get an amount of uh, cryptocurrencies in the proposed system. Uh, this is uh, also an activity that I'm showing up how the uh, paper submission process occurs, uh, happens. Uh, you submit the paper uh, to check if it is if it's existing in the IPFS. Then if it's not existing in the IPFS, then uh, the user is allowed to submit the paper. And uh, using smart contracts, uh, it is stored in the blockchain. Then uh, this is also a similar diagram. Uh, and uh, as functional requirements, uh, we have uh, proposed some points here. Uh, one is that uh, we authenticate the user using MetaMask uh, and also uh, allow users to search papers using MetaData. And again, uh, as an already of the project, uh, users can get an amount of using MetaMask as a group. And uh, users can also publish. Uh, as uh, uh, open or closed uh, in the system. And again, uh, functional requirements, uh, usability, reliability, and availability. These are the endpoints uh, proposed in the system. For the uh, tools and technologies, uh, I've used Angular as the front end and uh, Truffle as a route uh, for testing the application in a local environment. And uh, the other end blockchain technology is Ethereum. Finally, IBFS is used for storing uh, the content the papers, uh, other, than, uh, other than storing that uh, the blockchain. Uh, but, and uh, we have Solidity. Solidity, Solidity is a program which is used to port uh, the smart contracts necessary for the application. Uh, so, for the uh, presentation, uh, I spoke about uh, why moving on to the point 3.0 is, 3 is important and uh, the problem of uh, existing uh, public platforms is that uh, most of them are centralized and they charge a huge amount uh, and they mostly have the right to the content be published. That's one problem. And uh, also, making this uh, system decentralized. Uh, Others have an incentive, so they get an amount uh, once they publish their paper, rather than uh, giving the right to the centralized publication. Uh, and uh, these are the references. And finally, I would uh, like to thank uh, my supervisors, uh, Mrs. Uh, Sivisuri and Ida Sonato for helping me through this project. And uh, that's all for the presentation. Uh, thank you.
publication. Publisher. Publisher. Here, madam, there's no publisher. Since the uh, platform is decentralized, uh, there's no central central entity controlling the system. Yeah, the people are willing to depend on. 
Yes, it's your paper, it's a recognized paper. Someone is, someone is willing to tip you, he can tip the amount for you. Uh, so it, it can be a passive income for you. Okay. So my, my problem was when you are like going for the IT expert or something, when you are letting those people to deploy their research papers to your platform, again, 51% is increasing. And the other people are going to attack again to your platform. And the thing you are going to do is you are going to devote the power of the entities, but again, the entities will take power of your platform as well. Uh, so, what's your approach to not to let that happen? That's a challenge uh, to think about. I, I don't decide not to. You, you better think of that again because the problem that you are having to solve yes. and by your platform they can even for and again. Yes. Thank you. Any, any other questions? If not, uh, we can move to the next presentation. Uh, so our next presentation is uh, being taken at Ratnaika. Uh, is a researcher and a tech enthusiast who is currently working as an instructor at KDU, Faculty of Computing, Department of Information Technology. She is currently following her master's degree at the University of Palermo, Institute of Graduate Studies. Her research areas are minus capital management, business process engineering. How blockchain computer games make impact on current economic crisis? So we already know we have a crisis. So let's move on to the introduction part. Okay, so introduction. So globally we know like uh, computer gaming industry is vast industry. And when we considering in Sri Lanka, so it's still young. So we have some uh, little, little uh, approaches, but we are still growing but apart from that we use games for only for entertainment uh, purposes but now we can use it for earning purpose so when that comes the game changer is blockchain gamification so already know we have a economic crisis so we can use that one by developing a blockchain based games and by playing it. So the goal is to identify the impact of blockchain gamification on economy and how to implement and identify what's the business model which is suitable for Sri Lanka. So before the, uh, going for the Sri Lankan part, we should consider global market. So when we consider global market in 2019 after the COVID pandemic situation, the game uh, people used to play games more than before. So with that, uh, games in reason and you can see that uh, the prediction so you might think like why high in African part because other countries are already in high places they are in a peak place and others are coming on and uh, the most used mobile game platform is mobile gaming and others are like PC gaming and console gaming but when we consider in the easiness mobile games are the most popular thing so and uh, the, another way to reduce the cost of development because game development is somewhat like highly cost one. Uh, so for that, we can use through conducting an early CTR. CTR means click through rate. By clicking their ads and all, we can collect some money and we can do the further development. So here are the uh, 2022 global uh, game market uh, report. They also say it's like, uh, mobile game is the highest part in this area. So when computer games industry in Sri Lanka, so gaming economic system, as I said, in Sri Lanka is still young. 
and we have to consider mobile games because for the Sri Lanka mobile game is the most uh, suitable one than console games and PC games because of the uh, hardware parts are like very uh, exp uh, expensive these days. So uh, one thing is online education is increased screen time and increased popularity of the e-sports e because we know some incident happen in these days uh, and also use of advanced technology which captures the attention of the youth because 18 to 24 uh, as you can see uh, that's the main age but we can use other ages also uh, by giving um, adaptive games for them and uh, like incentive concept based games and strategies games can be uh, used for monetary rewards and uh, business model to grow computer game industry so we use just play that's all but now we can use play to earn concept this is the uh, business model we are uh, implementing so this is NFT uh, I think many of you know NFT basically used uh, many artworks than uh, other than like bitcoins but a bit similar this is also a token which is reside on blockchains but mainly used for game uh, now we can use for games like what is NFT means like the we have these uh, factors which is one is unique uh, then ownership because uh, that's can't be uh, copied so we have inside M N NFT there is a script so if you have like uh, suppose uh, have an image but you take a screenshot or something but that can be considered as a then transferable authentic and individual and it is very rare and very expensive also now NFT in game industry how we use that NFT in game industry so with the NFTs you can recoup your money by selling items like before we are just uh, putting money and uh, purchasing some characters or the sword or anything but now using NFT we can resell it by someone so you can see like uh, there are kirmans or them. these are the characters so after you uh, finish the game or you think like that's it I want to sell it but using NFT you can sell this so what is NFT gaming so without further information so in game items characters and avatars that play need to be successful play the game you know that but allowing players to earn cryptocurrencies by playing these NFT games and like suppose you are uh, you got a sword from M NFT but in previous case you have uh, like you can use that sword only for particular that game but using this one NFT you can use another totally different game that same sword so you can uh, have a ownership from that one that's a basic so this is a, one of the uh, NFT game Guild of Guardians so there are these characters you can uh, use NFTs and use these characters and get uh, ownerships and uh, how NFT games work so through the use of smart contract smart contract means a, a small program which include a program and instruction a program and there's only a NFT contract only for that particular uh, sword or a character or something so you can't copy that one and then NFT can be auctions like uh, you have might heard artworks have auction using uh, NFTs same you can uh, use these characters and the items can be auctioned and sold to raise money and then uh, connect to a crypto wallet if you use NFTs you have to use uh, ethereum crypto wallet and then purchase or collect in game characters play using your characters and take part in some type of competition and then you can also uh, win money from those competitions also then most NFT games have element of collectibles which can be won bought and sold to earn cryptocurrency 
so axi infinity is the most uh, popular and the most uh, completed version of the nft game and the considered as a leading uh, nft game also this one is highly used in philippines they clearly uh, they now they have a different kind of uh, ecosystem by uh, using this one uh, and they play highly and they earn from this one and uh, pay to earn model work how this work like basically uh, you play the game and then you uh, earn tokens and you can after that the earn tokens goes to the wallet and if you want uh, you can sell them and or auction them and get bitcoins and then convert them to dollars or a lkr so that's a basic one how to play to earn model work so what is gamify and pay to earn so gamify is combination of game and finance and base is pay to earn business model so this model is the one we can use for sri lanka so with p2e is designed to reward participants and this is a freemium mode because first we can uh, play free and then collect tokens then by after that you can uh, sell them and earn money then balance gaming enjoyment with financial rewards then uh, we will see how to build an nft game like this is somewhat kind of similar to sdlc but bit different so first one is pre production and invite professionals collect data the concept and platform design proper tech stack and most important uh, design a gdd and prototyping then second is uh, design development which means time to act and modeling game level design wallet setup most importantly uh, we have to collect nfts so we should have a uh, wallet then smart contract for program then time to coding after that testing mainly unit testing and alpha and beta testing have done then simply deploy and promote okay so possible economic uh, impact on sri lanka so if we use this one in nft first one is as a developers we can earn money by developing those nft games the second one is by playing we can uh, earn money as an individual so those are the parts we can use and by them we can use gamify for sri lanka and uh, have a total different economic sub ecosystem so that's a uh, our idea and second one is create scholarship platform because some people are unable to uh, earn or uh, pay to uh, pay and get a character so we can rent them so renting parties goes to scholarship and uh, send them to local and global platforms and create games so the conclusion is like uh, this is a this is a possibility to uh, get uh, income to sri lanka and uh, some much help to sri lanka and this will be next step to making computer games profitable business in sri lanka so these are the references and that's all so you can ask questions okay thank you uh, uh, it's time for the questions from the panel of judges this are it's uh, really interesting very interesting and uh, it's very good that you are thinking in a different angle and concern about how the nft games could be uh, uh, can be used for economic development um most of the time in nfts are using uh, uh, as art. user than artworks yes. right it's very popular This to is. get some uh, artwork through via the nft yes. so it's most of the time it's talk about the artwork yeah. so um in the gaming it's using nft is uh, quite a uh, new thing mm -hmm. in in modern sri lanka i think it's quite new for the no bad is very high yeah, yeah. um because mm, then uh, what do you think like uh, for i i have a uh, question like the security aspects of nft what do you think about that is uh, as you said ma'am we in sri lanka we don't have in for nfts and cryptocurrencies there are no policies yes so first we have to make policies for them yeah which is uh, 
for good for us like mm-hmm. if we use nft so for this one you, you mean like it's it should be go to the uh, political level uh, yeah we have to go yeah and then make policies and get, come back and do this thing yes then we can consider those uh, uh, like economic part and the uh, security part because uh, without uh, making that that part we can uh, can consider about the yeah. security part yes. in sri lankan context yes yes yeah because uh, they are may be like uh, so if you are using this thing because it's with the blockchain and all we yes. have to specifically think about that and actually i agree with that uh, yeah. uh, we have to uh, we have to set policies and procedures rules and regulations then after that we have to think about our nft security uh, do you have any research on how many of sri lankan people only one ma'am only one uh, nft nf not only not for nft ma'am for uh, cryptocurrency uh, they have one for is created for uh, ikta ikta they created like uh, 2000 yeah recently 2022? in 2022 february oh. they had okay. make one is still only that one and that also not uh, like very really helpful one like we in sri lanka we have a uh, uh, bitcoin mining people so for that like which is bit considered about illegal bitcoin mining but very higher uh, we can get many money from that but still we need uh, strict rules and regulation for that but the uh, kami uh, the new one is not enough so we need me in this i congratulate you are thinking about the different aspects thank you ma'am question from audience i have one question uh, you are going to deploy your application oh, sorry sir deploy your application uh deploy means uh, we can create new game also sir also we can use nft for existing games like we before they uh, we all know G- gta gta 5 so they have used uh, nft 5 uh, implemented for gta 5 so by paying gta 5 now we can uh, earn using nft so there are two ways implementing nft to games for existing one and we can uh, create new uh, game man with nft so when you come to gaming industry this uh, the hardware matters a lot uh, so paying uh, advanced games like uh, uh, the hardware part is paying a key role uh, what do you think about it uh, hardware mainly sir we, uh, hardware part we already have but we need knowledge for like unity and the uh, how to set the uh, ethereum and the unity and the, so those game engines we need those uh, knowledge not the hardware i think in my aspect i mean i mean that processor speed and memory and so yeah we have uh, those uh, hardware sir okay any other questions sir if not uh if you think about since you mentioned that uh, we can integrate it to the existing home apps right yes since you are focusing on sri lankan context as well as the mobile apps yeah if you think about the sri lankan company imi games they are doing play to pay as well as pay to earn both pay models to earn both, yeah. models, both yeah. models they are doing in subscription yeah. level manner along yeah. with all the what we call uh sub so telco service providers in mm. sri lanka as well as maldives, maldives algeria okay. and uh, some other countries because i have been there i have been product manager for them okay so how well you can integrate nft mm-hmm. into sri lankan context sri lankan those games if we do that it's quite easily going for the global market yes global market because rather than global market we should go global market we should focus on sri lankan market anyway it is in the sri lankan market in the yeah area. but uh, you think do you think the popularity is enough or no not not right no we are talking about sri lankan gaming context yeah in sri lankan gaming context there are three different uh, mm-hmm. level of people who are playing yeah. playing to earn, earn and play playing for, for fun, fun and, and people who doing as yes. a professional career yeah 
So basically, the highest number of people who are in there is playing to earn, oh, yeah. which are the normal down level people who are playing just to get a reload, maybe mm, to get yeah. a gift or an mm. iPhone, whatever mm. it is. So yeah. that market is already built with IMI and the popularity is there. The only yes. thing that we are not seeing that market is we are not in that market. Yes, that's true. But the market is already built and the market mm. is saturated even. Mm -hmm. There are no competitors, mm. only IMI. So how we can integrate IMI, those games, with NFT from with your NFT. perspective? Yeah. Uh, firstly, we have to test it because, like, without testing it, like, uh, like one game, we will test it, like doing NFT. Because many don't know NFT can use for gaming industry. One thing, and they still know as like a artwork and artwork selling thing. So we have to get that one, that part for the uh, gaming industry, and use them. And that part, I said, like. You earn and you own, get the ownership of one sword and you can use it other games. Like that we have to use like, we have to test with one game and see it, it, if it work or not. Then we will see if it work, we can do that for the other parts also. So that means for the Sri Lankan context, going with the current mobile apps that which are much yes. already popular in Sri Lanka, we yeah. have to test again and verify that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that yeah. was my Okay. Thank you. Without testing, we can't do anything. Yeah. Thank you. So, any other questions? Uh, Dean is a, a third day undergraduate following BSc honors in computer science uh, at uh, Faculty of Computing KDU. He is interested in project management, uh, mobile application development, and digital forensic area. <laughs> So over to you, uh, Dean, you can take the road. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Thamiz Dean. Today, I will be presenting about our research work on the topic Story Catcher, a library to improve early literacy skills and verbal fluency in kids. This is the content I will be going through. Mobile devices and technology have been rapidly developing in the past few years. As a result of this growth in technology, mobile phones are a very common sight in today's society and have made life much easier. Children too have been affected by this technological advancement. Children too at a very small age start to use mobile phones, tablets and other digital devices. These devices have become a part of the children's life and if used properly, it can help them in their development process especially in education. M-learning and e-learning has become one of the most efficient methods of learning with the advancement in mobile technology and expansion of smartphone use. With a few clicks, people can access a variety of content and productivity tools. As a result, learning, reading, writing has become easier and simpler. As we all know, there are various e-library mobile applications that are freely available to download to our smartphone these e-library mobile applications are in various languages and grouped into kids, teenagers, adults, and various other categorizations. Also, reading is very important for a growing child to develop their early literacy skills. When it comes to the problem domain, we identified that due to the busy lifestyle that exists today, parents are unable to direct their children to read books. At this playful age, children are less interested in using digital devices for reading but show more interest in using digital devices to watch animated cartoons. There are no existing e-library mobile applications with both Sinhala and English material. Also, there are no mobile applications with the Sinhala narrative feature. A common problem is that kids spend excessive amount of time using digital devices. We see this as a great opportunity to use technology to guide children to, to read. Considering this, I introduce to you Storycatcher. Storycatcher is a kids e-library mobile application consisting of storybooks, songs and poems in both singular and English languages. This e-library mobile application is specially designed for kids to provide them the opportunity to develop their reading, listening and communication skill at a very young age. Our aim is to develop a safe digital media platform to provide access to quality reading material for kids in both singular and English languages. 
The objective behind Storycatcher is to develop the reading and listening skill of the kid, improve a child's pronunciation and verbal fluency and communication skills, boost a child's imagination and stimulate curiosity, allow the child to experience cultural backgrounds and learn two languages, increasing the kid's sight word recognition and achieve all of this by avoiding overuse. The technology we have used to develop the mobile application is mentioned in this slide. We'll, we developed the application using Java programming language using the Android Studio development environment. We use the Firebase Firestore data, database for the data storage and data retrieval requirements. Design prototyping was done using Figma. Moving on to the design and features, let's first go through the architectural design. Architectural design describes the components and specifications required to support the solution and ensure that the design meets the specific business and technical requirements. In our application, we have followed the three-tier architecture, which splits the overall design into three layers as presentation layer, which is the user interface, application layer, where the data is processed, and finally data layer, where the data associated with the mobile application is stored and managed. Moving on to the interface design. The graphical user interface is specially designed considering on how colors, shapes, and symbols affect the kit. We have used gender neutral colors like yellow, green, brown, and orange. These colors are considered to be comfortable to the eye and stimulate a learning experience. To provide a satisfying user experience for the kids, we have avoided cursive letters, avoided large chunks of text, and used icons instead of text where possible. The login and registration module is where a, a new user creates an account and an existing user logs into their existing account. Usually, this process is done by the parent. The parent can create profiles for each of their kids by entering the relevant details as in figure 5 and choose a profile picture. Then select the intended kids profile. Then we go to the library module. In the bottom of the screen, we get the bottom navigation bar which includes the home page my library, search, and game page. Referring to figure 8 and 9, you can see the English and Sinhala content. Figure 10 is the my library where kids can easily access their favorite content without having to go through the whole library. The search option provides the ability for a search book, song, or poem using the keywords. Figure 12, 13, and 14 are the game interfaces. We have included an educational word game. The process of the game is that it gives jumble letters for a certain word and then the user has to guess the correct word to score points. There are three difficulty layers as easy, intermediate and advanced, which the user can select according to their preference. Finally, we have the settings module. The settings module is meant for the parent, hence it is designed in such a way that it cannot be accessed by the kid. The settings can be Access by long pressing on the settings button located on the top right corner of the library interface. The button is less noticeable for the kid and is less likely that the child will long press the button. The parent can change kids profile details, change the account password and set a screen time from the settings. Kids overusing the application can be controlled using the screen time. The screen time interface can be seen in figure 17. What happens here is the parent selects a time for the from the preset times and lets the child use the application. When the time runs out, the mobile application automatically closes. In the future, we hope to have a more enhanced mobile application and provide a better user experience to our user. The following are some of the future enhancements we will try to achieve. Develop the mobile application compatible for cross platforms like iOS and Android. Use machine learning for content recommendation. Implement the Algolia search function. Make available a user subscription payment. Activate voice search and include an offline mode. As a conclusion, Storycatcher is an age-appropriate, kid-friendly e library mobile application. Our mobile application provides the user with a wide range of books, poems, and songs in both singular and English languages. Providing the user with a seamless use experience and kid-friendly learning environment providing a, improving the child's imagination and cognitive development. The minimum specifications to run the application is as follows. 
Android OS 5.4, RAM of 3GB, Android version 4.2 Jelly Bean, chipset Snapdragon 410, CPU quad core 1.2 GHz, 5-inch touchscreen display, 500 MB memory space, and an internet connection. This is a short preview video of the working of our mobile application. In this slide, we have mentioned our references. Finally, I extend my sincere gratitude to my supervisor, my team, and those who helped in the successful completion of this paper. I thank General Sir John Kutalawal Defence University for providing me this opportunity to showcase my efforts and improve my research potential. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions from the panel? So to add new content, I just have to add the videos or the books to the database. So it automatically gets updated in the application. Ah, so the creator has to upload yes, and the, when you update yeah, the application. Yeah, I have to, yeah. Uh, have you uh, tried it, uh, some kids to using this system? How was their uh, feedback on this? So I let two kids use this. They were happy. One of the replies of one of my was was that was exciting. So only I have given them for two kids. So. Mm. What is the age? So the mobile application is developed for kids under the age of eight. Uh -huh. So one of them was six, and other one was about four years old. Any questions from the audience? Uh, yes, sir, that is me, myself, putting the uh, I have a question here. So, there are existing learning uh, applications for kids. So, in your story capture application, what are the uniqueness that you have with the existing applications? 
So, madam, the existing applications, North applications have both similar and English content. So, that is an novelty. And additionally, the kid can use the read only option, which then the kid just has to read the book, there won't be any audio, just read the book. And additionally, the screen type, the parent can set a screen time, and uh, when the time's up, the application closes. Improvement in the literature. In ranking, questions can be asked. So, so nowadays, uh, kids mostly use mobile phones to watch cartoons. So, as you see in the videos that I, I played, the, there is a poem or song with a cartoon. So, children will like it more because they will be able to be more interactive for them. Like that. Sir. What about the usage? Usage means so? Like, uh, how many times did you use this one? Or, uh, usage is influenced, the, improve the literature as uh, So, maybe one time use, two time use, or three times? The question is not clear, sir. I mean, I as in usage. But usability, as the usage goes on, uh, how to make sure that. Uh, so, sir, we can categorize the books according to the age. So, one of the renowned authors is Sibyl Vet, Sibyl Vet is in her. So, we can include her, her books for certain age, like from 6 to 8, they can read those books and then categorize the books according to the age group. As the age group increases, kids will. the, the Word use, the number of pages increases, right? So the content in the book increases. So according to that, we can categorize the books according to the age. Any questions, other questions? Uh, if not, we can move to the last presentation. Uh, Tommy is a member of British Comfort Society. In computer society of Sri Lanka, he is an entrepreneur and completed his master's in CSU Australia. Currently, he is reading for his PhD in the National Institute of Library and Information Science, University of Colombo. He is a visiting lecturer at to, uh, University of Vocational Technology. His research interests are information systems in agriculture, games development, sustainable development. He is a farmer and the managing director of Hindu Export Private Limited and Silicon Cinnamon and uh, Mango Private Limited. He is presenting a paper on identifying the usage level of ICT based knowledge management systems in vegetable farmers in Sri Lanka. Research findings uh, done with my supervisors, Dr. Jeevani Gunatilaka and uh, Dr. Lasanti De Silva from the University of Columbia. Uh, actually, you know, as software engineers and people who are in the IT sector, we have passed several eras of ICT. Early days, we were talking about data processing, and uh, then we talk about information management, and now we are talking about knowledge management. Uh, Sri Lanka is an agriculture country, as you know, and uh, our farmers require various kind of information for their cultivation, from crop selection to uh, through all the cultivation process and harvesting time and post-harvesting activities as well. Uh, 
Oh, this, uh, they need knowledge for various activa activa uh, activities which we are, which they are in involving in their farming process. For this uh, knowledge, they require various kind of information. There are several and plenty of information systems have been given for, for agriculture sector in Sri Lanka um, by various organizations, universities, and uh, non-government organizations. But we have identified that the usage of these systems are very low and farmers are not interested and not continuously using these information systems. Actually, I started my PhD research for, uh, to find out, uh, I mean, to investigate, to investigate about some problems existing in the agriculture sector about the uh, selling side of vegetable. But then finally I found that uh, we identified that farm, uh, it is too hard for farmers to introduce these systems and uh, there, are, there are some problems which we have not touched and which we have not identified. Farmers are always uh, not continuously using these problems. Uh, so, uh, systems. So, Sri, uh, Sri Lanka is country. We are using ICT for various sectors, and now we are in a very good position. And uh, IT, ICT infrastructure is very high level in Sri Lanka. So, you have ICT facilities all over the country. But uh, there are some problems in the usage of systems. So, uh, as we know that to become, to build out a, build a knowledge management system, knowledge base, we need good repository of, repository of information base. And uh, to have much large information base, only that we can create a good knowledge base. It's something like circle and uh, without using these information, available information systems, we cannot create knowledge. So, it's a problem in Sri Lankan agriculture sector. And the research question that we are we were trying to investigate here is, what is the usage level of ICT-based knowledge management systems among vegetable farmers in Sri Lanka? So, we have done uh, several uh, we have referred various papers published in locally as well as uh, internationally and identify some key areas of this pro uh, problem and identify some factors that which, which affected by uh, to not to use these systems in Sri Lanka as well as various countries. So the objective of this research is to identify the usage level of ICT based knowledge management systems among farmers in Sri Lanka. So, uh, based on literature uh, research and uh, with my supervisor's uh, advices, we have uh, given some questionnaires for farmers in various areas of the country. Due to, uh, we did it in uh, 2000. Uh, 21 and uh, in September and due to this COVID situation we was unable to reach farmers physically and we tried to di we distributed this questionnaire over the so social media and uh, we got several responses and uh, since that we could capture only a part of farmers like we could capture farmers who have the ability of accessing information systems, uh, we got some contacts of farmers from Gampha district and we directly contacted them and collected their details over the phone. And uh, we had to go through some data screening process and we finally we found about 54 responses 
and uh, we continue with that for our preliminary research. So there were several special questions that we uh, for, I mean, uh, created this questionnaire. The question number eight, actually we, we try to identify the extent of ICT system uh, usage of farms. So the question number eight, do you know there are computer-based mobile and uh, mobile phone information systems that provide agriculture information for farming activities? And we got 34 answers says yes and 20 say no. And again, uh, question number 10, based on question number 8, we divert into the next level and uh, this question asks for people who, have, who said yes to the question number 8. Do you, you use computer computer mobile information systems that provide agriculture information for farming activities? Resistance responses as follows and we got 19 yes and 15 no. Now we got about six, uh, 54 uh, responses and uh, out of this uh, 54, 35 farmers are not using any information systems for farming activities. This is some kind of, I mean, it's a preliminary research and not a research which is, uh, which we can come to conclusion. But as it is, as this, as this uh, research findings, 64.8% of farmers are not using and uh, agricultural information systems and uh, these are the uh, responses mentioned by farmers that not to use information systems so they said that no computer or smartphones they don't have knowledge uh, they don't uh, do not know how to use computer or smartphones lack of conf confidence likewise they had several uh, responses given and uh, according to the responses received for question number 10 there were 19 users farmers uh, users of information systems and the uh, next important uh, important question given to these uh, 19 users were question number 14 which asked are you satisfied with this uh, services provided by information systems you use. This is for people who have said, who said yes that they are using information system. 12 people say they are satisfied and 7 people said they are not satisfied with this system. So we try to get some uh, reasons for not to satisfy, uh, for their non-satisfaction. So they said that uh, the information system, information display is incorrect no new information, not updated, and no required information. The available information is incomprehensible and handling is very complex. Likewise, they came with several reasons. So, uh, actually, we wanted to see the extent of ICT uh, usage level in Sri Lanka. The among farmers, the data, uh, data analysis limited to responses re uh, received selected from main question out of 27 questions in the questionnaire as per the result 37.3 of farmers are not aware about the existing existence of this agricultural information systems in Sri Lanka so uh, there's some kind of uh, situation where we have to address and uh, we were thinking of going for a further research by covering the uh, entire country like uh, go with uh, by distributing questionnaire for about at least 400 uh, farmers to get a real situation of the country's uh, ICT usage among farmers then we can come to uh, go for some kind of recommendations uh, for farmers to use ICT systems for their farming, farming activities.
to use knowledge. Uh, use of knowledge gain with uh, proper information will help to farmers to manage their mention issues in the agriculture sector in Sri Lanka. The knowledge driven agriculture can be used as the driving force for solving most of these issues in Sri Lankan agriculture sector and that has been provided in many other similar economies as well as developing countries. The main objectives of implementing such knowledge driven agriculture in Sri Lanka are low and uh, low use and resistance to accept ICT based information system among farmers. So there, there should be an acceptable attraction for the farmers to use information system continuously. The main issue that we I find that given apps have been introduced by various organizations like universities and in other institutions institutions uh, have not been used for longer time period. So we have to give some kind of uh, acceptable attraction or some kind of uh, influence for farmers to continuously use. Then only we can create real agriculture based knowledge bases in ICT based, using ICT systems. So these are the references that I use and I'm, I'm, I would like to thank uh, uh, Nilis of University of Colombo, the Hearty and the KDU for organizing this event. Thank you very much. Any questions? I got responses from uh, online responses from all over the country and uh, telephone uh, telephone responses from Gampa district. Okay, so uh, um, from each, if, if I I am um, what I felt was, I think you can initially do this uh, research for a selected area of the country. Otherwise, uh, there are a lot of dependencies. For example. Uh, from district to district, uh, there will be differences, and also from cult uh, cultivation to cultivation as well. Like, it. for example, if you ask from a paddy field uh, cultivator or tea cultivator, the, 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 there should be different. So, I think if you try to generalize some of the conclusions, uh, you need to pick one of the area and one uh, field also. Yeah, actually, my, I have focused uh, my area for vegetable cultivation and vegetable. so I selected that's why I had to go through data screening process as well but the thing is like I thought that uh, from I got uh, telephone con con telephone uh, responses from Gampa district about 30 farmers I got uh, obtained the, their contacts through uh, agriculture departments but department but the thing is uh, it was according to them according to the response that I got the level of usage of ICT is very low and their awareness also very low even though that they are they, they are in restful products. Yeah, one particular question that you may add, I don't know whether it is already there, but you can ask whether they believe in believe that technology will improve their uh, so I powers I and on the other hand uh, is there any area that uh, they believe whether they can get an improvement using technology. Uh, I yeah, think that's maybe yes, the uh, important part because you ask whether uh, they have the enough literacy on 
ICT to use some application, but to where? That's the next question I get. So maybe you are heading to that direction. So you are proposing some solutions to them at the end of this uh, whole study. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Uh, oh, 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 one last question, maybe. Uh, now, in this, ne what's the next step of this question here? What's uh, your plan? Actually, uh, we did this uh, during pandemic situation, pandemic period. So that's why we was un we were unable to uh, reach farmers physically. Now uh, we are trying to do uh, the uh, trying to do a physical kind of like uh, paper based questionnaire, distribution of paper based questionnaire with some more details. Like now we, we, we know that there is a problem, right? We can prove that there they can say that there is a problem. So this is a preliminary kind of research and. Uh, we will get uh, get some uh, go through some more literature and focus our research into according to literature and focus an area like uh, we are planning to do it in Martali district so cover several village several villages and trying to uh, collect about uh, 400 responses through yeah uh, what sort of uh, what sort of uh, Things you are asking whether they are already know or actually, for example, is it our, about some our, app or our, using an equipment for their yeah. related field? Is it something like that? Uh, I just ask uh, because uh, I'm curious. Uh, uh, what is it? An app or you are asking to use them uh, equipment or something like that? Uh, no, actually, not only apps like information system usage. Uh, they are. Uh, I mean, knowledge about existence of ICT systems and they are, whether they are using. First thing that we, we ask whether they do, whether they are aware about existence of these systems, like uh, such systems. Yeah. Then we, we ask whether they have used it. Then okay, they, can you give me an example of such a system? Like if you say uh, uh, Goipal app. Okay. Oh, Kushi? Yeah, those are apps. Yeah. 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 Oh, Kushi? Or oh, some uh, dialogue uh, price index? Likewise? Yeah. Most of farmers yeah. are, you know that uh, dialogue, uh, I mean, the mobile price index, but they are for many years. But most of farmers are not aware of it, about it. the existence of these systems. So that is what we identified through this particular system because you know that uh, most of the organizations. I think I believe that now this uh, these apps sometimes um, it's obvious that some people may not know about these apps. That's obvious because we also don't know all these all the apps existing in the world. Even we are related to a particular field. I think what we what you see you um, to get some important conclusions from this study. Maybe you can test their literacy on using these kind of apps for their feed. That's where we can get some good results. If you ask about a particular app, sometimes that app may not uh, useful for their work also. We don't know yet. But if you uh, can identify whether they they have the literacy to use it when required. That's the, the important point uh, which I'm looking from this kind of a study. But you may have a different view also. Don't worry, just my feeling. I, I just gave my opinion about this one but, uh, to get good results from this study because we are doing a PhD. So you have enough time, I think uh, you can continue with this work. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, other questions? So, can't we use uh, places like the Central Bank or uh, Agriculture Department to get such information? Uh, they are they are databases. Uh, uh, they don't have these information, sir. They have some uh, information about uh, Central Bank. They have mentioned some information about their uh, ICT, uh, I mean ICT uh, literacy and all, 
but when we when we come, when we go to the when we get into the field is totally different like i have done several researches about uh, i uh, went into deep 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 i did some deep study about several apps installed in sri lanka and uh, we found that they have not used more than 6 months they they started with the very huge marketing campaigns and things and finally uh, when it comes to the end of the year they we, they got only two three uh, responses like they used with them and then when we go to farmers then uh, actually farmers have many problems than using these kind of apps and they are they are not interested and the main problem that we do have uh like since i am a farmer now i want to do, get some information about what to cultivate for the next uh, uh season then i had to go to uh palapattala gojan seva and ask from ai what is the extent that they you have in what is the extent of uh, chilies that they have cultivated then they used to uh go through several books and they said 3.4 hectares i know that is not true in matle district three weeks ago i went palapattala gojan seva and talked to ai in my area and they had to go through several books and they said 3.5 hectares of chilies have been recorded so that is not true in my estate i have done about more than 1 hectare so that is not encountered and i know some friends of mine have done more than me so not real and not true so we can't get some kind of we can't go for some kind of decision with available available information there is no centralized place because i know party is doing their own app and minister of agriculture is doing their own app minister of kalam is having their own app and minister of arun is having own app, own app and minister of agriculture is also providing their their own app for farmers right no one is having some kind of centralized place and we can't get it and we without any centralized information we can't get any knowledge of a uh, decision making process so there's a problem in sri lanka and agriculture sector and farmers can't use and they don't use they don't. Uh, finally it becomes some bogus information that's it that's what happened that's the nature of the use of ict in agriculture in sri lanka but maybe the the infrastructure might be a very essential guide you know sir infrastructure infrastructure is not a problem because most of farmers are using because uh, mobile phones they even though that they don't have their son or somebody is having so i found only one farmer is not to have i mean without a mobile phone i got only one farmer they have their infrastructure even I am in the middle of uh, Martin district and very rural area with elephants and all and we have all the facilities there is no problem of infrastructure in sri lanka only there is some governing problem or some other attraction or farmers are not interested due to some problem any other questions uh Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Sir. Presentation uh, with uh, valuable contribution. I hope uh, researchers will uh, go forward, their, continue their research in the future, and make some valuable publication available for uh, reader to use. Uh, thank you very much. Now come to the end of the computing. technical parallel session 4 now i would like to invite dr e a t a edrisuria the chair of the session to present certificates to the presenters Our presenters are Mr. B. A. K. Vinsura, Mr. 
Mr. C. S. Vanikasuriya. Ms. B. M. T. N. Ratnayaka. Mr. M. T. A. Dean. And finally, Mr. S. I. Badegamage. Please remain as you are for a moment. Now, I would like to invite the Dean of Faculty of Computing, Dr. Arsela Gunasekara, to present the token of appreciation to the chairperson. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the organizing committee,